Hi there and welcome to Garage Time and my Porsche 911 restoration. Last week we got a lot done. We got the uh, extension onto the long hood finished, the inner um, skin finished, uh, but not installed. And I didn't get a chance to finish this piece. This was the channel, a seal channel. It had been rusted out, so I couldn't stand it anymore. I cut it out um, and I debated if I should buy it or make it. And so I kind of challenged myself if I could do it in under an hour, it'd be worth my time to just go ahead and make it. So that's what we're going to start with today. Garage time. So here's my empty table. Um, I will grab all the tools and metal as I need to. The clock right now is at uh, almost five o'clock. So I'm going to put the camera up and just let it roll. Okay, five minutes to spare. We now have, you know, this this part. I punched the the holes in it so it could be um, rosette welded or plug welded. Here's the channel. I did make some mistakes. I, I originally I put the the bend line on the wrong side. This flange height right here is still a little too long, so I'm gonna wait till I get the seal and then I'm gonna trim that later. Okay, now it's time to install this piece onto the underside of the hood. And to do that, I want to remove the hood. Okay. 
Here's the underside of the extension piece, and you can see the backside of the welds. There are, you know, they're fully, fully penetrated, kind of smoothed out. This is the, the existing um, inner structure, and this is the new piece. So remember, the welds are offset a little bit because we unfolded the hem that originally came over this. So now we're going to install this piece. So this piece will go in like, like so. So it needs to be trimmed to fit. The length is off and definitely this width right here. So now it's just a matter of uh, getting it fit in and then uh, welding it on. I got this piece sitting in pretty well, pretty nice. Here's the folded over edge and here's the end of it. So this is gonna get folded over as well. This side is also looking pretty good. All the way along. There's a little bit of room right there, but that'll, that'll come out. But the difficulty now is how do I trim this line because the mating surface is blind. I, you know, you can't see where to mark it. So we're gonna have to take some measurements and try to, you know, trim this. It's gonna, it's gonna be a little time consuming because it's gonna be a lot of trial and error. But we gotta get it. Okay, so it just so happens that this seal channel that I made um, has about the same curvature as this piece that I'm trying to trace for the trim. I'm gonna use that edge to trace these lines that I just marked with a ruler with the correct distance. Just gonna trace it, get it the curve I need, and then see how it fits. Holy moly, that was a lot of, that was a lot of work. It was about 10 times. I mean, is that a thing? 10 times is charm. I needed to get this gap in pretty tight so that the TIG welding was as easy as possible. Maybe I could have done a little better with maybe a cardboard template, but you, when it's a blind edge like that and you don't have a whole lot to um, mark with, it, it's just time consuming. All right, here's a close up of the the fit. I got to use my thumb a little bit to push that down, but it fits pretty tight all the way along. The biggest gap is I think right here and it's probably, it's like a fingernail. So I have to go a little slow on the TIG welding right there, but that's okay. Let's, uh, let's just get it on. All right, before I can weld this on, I need to clean the surfaces really well um, and scuff it up for some primer and some, some paint just to protect it from uh, corroding inside.
Okay, I'm generally not a, a big fan of these rattle cans, but for this purpose, you know, small piece inside, never to be seen, it's the uh, easiest and best thing to do for right now. Okay, while the paint is drying on the hood and the inner skin of the hood, I thought I would come back to this piece, which I, I made earlier, and prep the area here on the trunk to, uh, to get ready to weld it on. I do need some weld through primer, but I can fill in all these small holes that were created due to the spot weld drill. Um, most of them aren't all the way through, but there's some tiny divots that, you know, can't hurt to fill them up before I, uh, get this treated for welding. So here I just welded in some of the divots created by the spot drill. As it went through both panels, it leaves little uh, divots in there. Definitely not the biggest deal, but uh, since I had the time, I just filled them up. I'm gonna grind them smooth and then um, get ready to weld the new piece on. All right, so that's about as far as I'm gonna take it. There, it, It's not all the way out, it's not 100% perfect, but this is the last wire wheel, it's been washed down. Um, you know, this is pretty good. Here's the part that goes on here. So it sits, it sits nice and flat, lines up where the other one did. And we're just gonna weld through these holes as soon as we get some of the uh, correct primer. Sorry, I forgot to turn my microphone on. Here I'm taking the painted parts that have dried overnight and clamping them in place, getting ready to begin the welding. Okay, one of the downsides of welding um, this panel in is that it's painted on the back and I have no access to the back. So those the paint contaminates the weld and then it, it pops and it deposits all this um, void onto the tungsten. <laughs> so this has to be uh, cut off, resharpened, and then weld up those holes, which is uh, taking a little more time. Finally got the weld all the way done. So this is all the way across and uh, it looks pretty good. Can't complain. Couple issues with um, contamination, but overall this is fine. I just, I just wire wheeled it so it's kind of shiny. So I'm gonna knock down the high spots real quick with the, um, with the die grinder. And then next step is to fold over this, uh, this hem. I've already folded these over. I gotta weld up the seams. Um, this side over here, I already started. I welded one of them. I got to finish this one. Okay, this is um, pretty much done right now. I have these um, edges hemmed over and the, the seams are welded and connected. Um, corners are welded.
Okay, the hood's back on and the gaps are about what they were before. And then here is the section right here where it mates up with the, with the grill. This gap is pretty even all the way along and then it starts to curve to, um, to my right. This is not the weld seam. This actually is the crease left over from when I unhammered the hem. The weld's just below that. This gap over here is um, looking pretty good. Um, this grill is kind of loose, but... Uh Alrighty, I just added some material to the bottom here of the hood. This side looks pretty good. It might still be a little bit too tight on the bottom, but always uh, to be adjusted. And then this side here looks uh, good. I mean, I could live with that. So um, once again, let's take a further look back. And there is the long hood conversion Porsche backdate. I'm really happy with how this turned out. Not only is the alignment good now, but when I, when I lift up on this lip, I can, I can support the hood on the very outer edge, and this doesn't flex or, or bend or, or feel wobbly at all. It feels nice and secure. And the added benefit is this rib that was put in on the bottom is a great handle. When you're lifting the hood, your fingers rest on that rib, and uh, it gives it some a handle. So as you lift it up, it feels, it feels really nice. So I'm happy with the outcome of this long hood extension, and... Porsche backdate project. Thank you again for watching and hope to see you next week. Don't forget to like my channel and subscribe if you haven't already done so. Thank you again.